Hi guys, today we're continuing with the series Unsolved October. This story takes me back to my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Despite the fact that I lived my entire life in the Steel City until 2020, I knew nothing of the disappearance of 22-year-old Tony Turner. Sadly, like so many other stories of women who go missing in America, this case has not captured the world's attention like others in recent headlines. Tony and her family deserve answers and could really benefit from some much needed national attention. So let's jump right in. Pittsburgh, located in southwest Pennsylvania, is a big city with a small town feel. It was voted most livable city in 2005, 2009, and 2011. It's famous for a number of things. There are three primary rivers, the Allegheny, the Ohio, and the Monongahela. It boasts 446 bridges, more than any other city in the world. It's got a famous sandwich with coleslaw and fries tucked under thick slices of Italian bread, and it's got Super Bowl rings, six of them. If I sound like a proud Pittsburgher, it's because I am. But the Steel City, once a smoky industrial center, is also renowned for its visionaries in medicine and tech. And the culture is world class. Pittsburgh is teeming with writers, poets, actors, and artists. That's where Toni Turner found her peeps. Toni Marie Turner was born June 10, 1997. According to her big sister, Sydney, Toni was always a vivacious, creative person. She was even described as magnetic. As a child, she frequently got into trouble with mom Darlene for drawing on the walls, and she experimented with every type of medium, from chalk art and sketching to paints and ceramics. She lived art, and her creative spirit was evident in everything she did. At the time of her disappearance in late December 2019, Tony was working more than full time. She worked 40 hours a week as a metal fabricator at Studebaker Metals in the borough of Braddock. Now, when I first read this, I immediately thought of the rebar that went into the city's many bridges. Then my mind took me back to the 1983 movie Flashdance about a female welder in Pittsburgh working a gritty day job to support her dreams of becoming a dancer. Dancing was also a huge part of Tony's life. Friends say she loved attending concerts and could often be seen in the front row, dancing to any style music that was playing. She also studied flamenco and Catholic, an Indian form of dance. But Tony's 9 to 5 was different from the flash dance heroine. Studebaker Metals forges minimalist jewelry of various materials, including brass, silver, and gold. Their big sellers are cuff style bracelets and signet rings, so even Tony's day job was creative. In addition to making art, Tony shared it too. She worked part-time teaching ceramics at Braddock Carnegie Library's Bathhouse Ceramics Studio. In 2018, she worked alongside another teaching artist, Marseille Nixon Washington. Marseille describes her missing friend as, quote, one of my favorite people on the planet. Tony was living in the neighborhood of Hazelwood when she went missing. She could often be found inside the Dobra Tea House in nearby Squirrel Hill. She was a regular there, described as friendly but quiet. According to her sister Sydney, she was also introspective, working some things out in the fall of 2019. She was confronting some personal undisclosed trauma, according to Sydney. Like many young women of 22, she was trying to find and forge her place in the world. She had admitted to being somewhat depressed, but she seemed to have turned a corner and was behaving more like her joyful, exuberant self. And so it seemed on December 30th, 2019. Following her 8 to 4 shift at Studebaker, Tony went for her usual tea at Dobra. She was last seen inside the Murray Avenue shop around 6 p.m. where she texted with her sister. The temperature was an unseasonably high 61 degrees early in the day, but would drop to just above freezing. Tony was reportedly wearing a black zip-up jacket, a gray shirt emblazoned with habla espanol in orange letters on the back, gray cargo pants, and possibly a black head wrap. When last seen, Tony measured 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighed 130 pounds. She is African American with brown eyes and chin length curly hair. When she left the tea shop, she was never seen or heard from again. According to Tony's aunt, she frequently lost her cell phone, so when an hour went by without anyone hearing from her, they weren't surprised or alarmed. But by 8 p.m. that evening, they became concerned and knew something wasn't right. While the family fretted into the next morning, a firefighter riding a bike on the Homestead Grays Bridge found some belongings on the pedestrian walkway. They included a purse, cell phone, keys, a journal, 
a pair of shoes, bottled water, and a ceramic item described as either a vase or jar. On Tuesday, the cyclist phoned Tony's family at 11.11 a.m., and before noon, Tony's mother, Darlene Johnson of Turtle Creek, was in possession of the articles. There is some dispute, however, regarding Tony's wallet. Early reports say it was found inside the bag discovered by the firefighter. Some months later, Tony's friend Marseille said the wallet appeared mysteriously on the ground beneath a missing persons poster. Also mysterious is the disappearance of the shoes and the ceramic piece. It seems the firefighter mentioned seeing them, but was unable to retrieve them with the other more personal possessions. And at some point between Monday night and Tuesday morning, the shoes and ceramic jar disappeared from the bridge walkway. Like Tony herself, they have not been recovered. On January 1, 2020, Pittsburgh police released a missing poster. Tony was reported as missing and endangered. Well known in her community, word of her disappearance began to spread. On January 2nd, NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, released their missing persons poster. Other search efforts were underway. On January 3rd, following a tip from the public, family and friends traveled to the Hill District neighborhood and walked door to door with flyers. Sydney Turner said Tony had no known ties to the Hill, a community known for high crime. A police officer followed the family to ensure their safety. Meantime, Sydney made reference on her Facebook page to a possible connection between Tony and Interstate 80, which runs between the east and west coasts of the United States. She said, quote, we do not trust anyone she is traveling with. The public was asked specifically to look for Tony in Ohio, Nevada, and Utah. They also requested that residents and business owners check their security cameras and closed circuit TV footage for possible sightings of Tony. It should be noted that her world was pretty insular. Her regular travels encompassed an area of just five to six miles in total. On January 4th, a vigil was held at the Carnegie Library of Braddock. Over 100 supporters attended the event, which took place in the library's art lending room. This was the site of Tony's 2018 exhibition, Breath of Life. While the family was initially satisfied with the efforts by Pittsburgh police early on, Sydney cites a frustration and dissatisfaction with the investigation overall. I can't say that I blame her. I saw very little written about this case after January 2020. She explains that while a review of Tony's journal, found on the bridge, does express some feelings of sadness, she confirms her sister was in better spirits in late December. She says that upon reading the diary entries, police interest in the case fell off. They dismissed the disappearance as a possible suicide, stating that the missing young woman likely jumped from the bridge into the Monongahela River below. This conversation brings up a number of other questions, mysteries, and theories. Number one. Very little has been mentioned about Tony's means of travel between her home in Hazelwood, her work in Braddock, the Homestead Grays Bridge, and Dobra Tea in Squirrel Hill. It does not appear that she owned a car. From one interview I saw with Sydney, it seems Tony frequently rode the bus. As a regular rider of the Allegheny County Port Authority, I can confirm that buses in the Pittsburgh metro area were plentiful, so this made sense to me. There was one small reference to Tony being seen after Dobra Tea by a bus driver, but I have read nothing more about that. Was it a Port Authority driver who knew Tony as a regular? Was she possibly on this driver's bus that evening, or did said driver see her on the street? Weather reports confirm a light rain and falling temperatures on December 30th. Plus, it was dark by 6 p.m., so a bus ride seems more likely than a walk from Squirrel Hill to Homestead or Hazelwood. Number two, was Tony even on the Homestead Grays Bridge? Her personal items were, but was she? And what of the wallet? Was it in the bag as originally reported or found weeks later beneath a missing persons poster? If she did jump from the bridge as police seem to have assumed, did they dredge the Mon River to check? It would not likely have been frozen if temperatures had been in the low 60s. Again, I have seen no mention of such a search anywhere. And if she did jump or fall into the Monongahela, why wasn't a body recovered? The Mon flows into the Ohio River, which ultimately feeds into the Mississippi, but there are numerous dams and locks that would have prevented a body from traveling that far. Was any effort made to find a body? Other notable cases in the Pittsburgh area have called in the Army Corps of Engineers, 
Could this be a useful tool in Tony's case? Number three, what of the firefighter cyclist? Why is there no mention of a name or for that matter, even a gender? To my knowledge, no news outlet has even identified this person as being male or female. Number four, what about security video and CCTV? In 2019, there would have been cameras everywhere. Tony's family asked that residents and businesses check their footage to see if Tony is spotted on video. Did police follow up and develop any resulting leads? Number five, how hard did investigators search for the missing shoes and ceramic art piece? While unclear how pertinent they might be to the case, it is unusual that the firefighter noted seeing them, but no one else has said they had. Of course, it is certainly possible that a pedestrian or homeless person also spotted the items and chose to take them from the bridge. Number six, I read one small reference to a boyfriend named Jose. The boyfriend or husband is always questioned in the case of a missing person, or as recent events have shown us, they should be. Why has there been no further mention of Jose or any other possible romantic interest? Was this avenue explored? These are just a few of the questions that came up for me in this sad disappearance. The file on this case has got to be even slimmer than my checkbook. To that end, I don't have much of a wrap up to share. In September 2020, a beautiful mural was unveiled on Braddock Avenue across from Bell's Market. The mural depicts Tony Marie Turner with her birthday and the date she went missing. At the bottom is the quote, the missing find solace in our hearts until they are found. The beautiful tribute was created by Tony's former colleague from the Ceramic Arts Program, Marseille Nixon Washington, and muralist Sandy Kessler Kaminsky. There were plans in the works to relocate the mural to another building later in the fall. Nixon Washington hopes the mural captures her friend's essence and spirit. She added, I hope that the city knows she is loved. We are still searching and we will find her. I want the world to know that Tony is more than just a missing person. This case is now chilly as it approaches the two-year mark. Anyone with information is asked to contact Pittsburgh Police at 412-323-7800 or the missing persons detectives at 412-323-7141. I will post all contact information in the description box below.